Hello everyone, myself N. Udayaranjan Gaud, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Aeronautical Engineering, MLR Institute of Technology. So, in the present module, we are going to discuss about stress analysis of fuselage due to bending. And in the previous module, we have discussed about the tapered wing spar problem and how the tapered wing spar shear flow distribution can be solved. And then in the present one, we are going to extend the analysis to stress analysis of fuselage due to bending. And uh, the learning outcomes in this module are students are able to analyze bending of the fuselage and uh, solve problems on direct stress distribution in fuselage. So coming to shear fuselage, so a clad fuselage, so they consist of thin sheets of material and usually they are stiffened by large number of longitudinal stringers together with transverse frames. So they carry bending moments, shear forces and torsional loads which include axial stresses in stringers and the skin together with shear stresses in the skin. Also, the distance between the adjacent stringers is usually small so that uh, it is therefore reasonable to assume that the shear flow is constant between the adjacent stringers. So now let us try to consider the fuselage uh, in the bending effect. So, let us try to consider the bending effect of the fuselage by straight away considering a problem. Okay? So, let us look into this problem. The fuselage of a lightweight uh, light passenger carrying aircraft has a cross circular cross section shown in figure A and the cross sectional area of each stringer is 100 mm square. So, he has given the cross sectional area of each stringer as 100 mm square. And the vertical distances are given in figure A are to the midline of the section wall at the corresponding stringer position. If the fuse lies subjected to a bending moment of 200 kilonewton meter, so he has given a fuse large is subject to bending moment of 200 kilonewton meter, and he mentioned applied in a vertical plane of symmetry. At this section, he is asking to calculate the direct stress distribution. Okay, so the formula for direct stress distribution. And uh, the given diagram, what he is asking to calculate is nothing but, and uh, he is asking to calculate the direct stress distribution. So, the formula for the direct stress distribution, since this is a fuseless cross section and which is a doubly cross section, that means it is symmetrical about horizontal axis as well as symmetrical about vertical axis. So, the shear center lies at the junction of these uh, centroidal axis. Okay. So, therefore, because of the symmetry and we know clearly that uh, uh, Ixy product of inertia you can substitute it as 0 and uh, he has given the bending moment applied in vertical plane. So, bending moment applied in vertical plane means it is given as mx and you can consider my as 0 and Ixy is 0 from the symmetry. So, because of this and the stress direct stress distribution formula reduces to mx into ixx into y. So, you can consider this as first equation and in which he has given mx already that is 200 into uh, kilo newton meter and again you can uh, convert this mx as mx equals to 200 into you can convert this kilo as 10 to the power of 3 and meter also you can convert into mm. So, that you are going to get mx as 200 into 10 to the power of 6 newton mm. Okay. So, what you require for this problem is nothing but moment of inertia you have to calculate. So, moment of inertia, the calculation of moment of inertia, since uh, uh, before that what we need to do here it is, uh, all the stringers are there. So, there are 16 stringers are there starting from 1, 2, 3 here up to 16. So, 16 stringers are placed on this fuselage cross section, they are attached to it. Okay, And therefore, what we need to do is, first of all we need to idealize the given figure into the idealized figure and uh, for this diagram. So, therefore, if you try to consider any one uh, stringer, either 1 or 2 or 3, then accordingly you can go on for idea for idealizing all these stringers. So, the stringer 16 stringers are there. So, all the 16 stringers has to be idealized and the idealized diagram is shown here. Okay, And he has given the thickness of this uh, fuselage and he has given as 0 0.8 mm. And the distance between each uh, centers also he has given one as 149.6 mm. Okay. So, the distance is also he has given. So, let us go into this problem. Uh, our aim is to first find moment of inertia and then look into the direct stress distribution. 
so for idealizing here and uh, from symmetry b1 equals to b9 and b2 equals to b8 equals to 10 equals to 16 and 3 equals to 7 equals to 11 equals to 15 and 4 equals to 6 equals to 12 equals to 14 and b5 equals to b13 so these are from symmetry so therefore uh, we need to calculate uh, the corresponding boom areas first so from the structure idealization we know that for boom 1 and it is consisting of two panels that is 1 2 and 16 1 so first we will write b b1 equals to first we will write the stringer area that is given as uh, 100 mm square so 100 plus we will try to write boom area for panel 1 2 plus boom area for panel 16 1 so i hope you remember the boom area so boom area is equals to b equals to td into b by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 1 this is the boom area so that we have to apply for panel 1 2 and then we have to apply for panel 16 1 so if you try to write like this so first if you try to write for 1 2 b 1 2 so for 1 2 thickness that is nothing but 0 0.8 into width is nothing but that he has given 149.6 divided by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 1 so as we discussed in the previous sessions in the structure idealization that strict sigma the stress is directly proportional to the distance from the neutral axis so therefore to, to write sigma 2 and sigma 1 values so we can use the distances so the distance from centroid up to sigma 2 from here to here is nothing but 352 and for sigma 1 from here to here the distance is nothing but 381 so we will write this as 352 divided by 381 as the distance so similarly you can write sigma 16 by sigma 1 so sigma 16 also you have having the similar distance that is nothing but 352 and sigma 1 is again 381 so you can write in a similar manner for 16 1 also so therefore you can get this uh, formula b1 that is equals to 100 0 0.8 into 149.6 divided by 6 and since you get the same thing so you are getting boom area 1 is equals to 216.6 mm square okay similarly if you follow the same uh, concept for finding other boom areas so you will get slight difference 216.67 or 7 or 6 like that so approximately you can take 216.6 mm square for all the boom areas and in which b5 and b13 are zero because uh, those are unstressed b5 and b13 because they are acting on the symmetrical axis and they are unstressed because of the load that is applied that is bending moment so therefore with this and uh, after conversion of the boom areas and then if you look at into the problem so our first aim is to calculate the moment of inertia okay so the moment of inertia uh, for this problem and you can use the formula ixx equals to summation of uh, br yr square you can use this formula and uh, if you look at into the first boom and the ninth boom so boom area is 216.6 and its y distance is nothing but 381 square br y r square like that for boom one and two you can write in a similar manner so therefore it is written by two okay so rest of all the booms uh, you can write uh, multiply by four for example if you look at uh, this uh, two if you look at this two so two equals to 16 this distance is same 352 similarly 8 and 10 also you get minus 352 anywhere you are going to square it so boom area of 2 that is b2 into 352 square like that you can write 4 booms okay so similarly for 3 you get 4 booms for 4 also you will get 4 booms all in the 16 booms so therefore you can write that 4 into 216.6 into 352 square and then 4 into 216.6 into 269.5 square so and then 4 into 216.7 into 145.8 square so if you try to calculate this you are going to get moment of inertia as 2.52 into 10 to the power of 8 mm power 4 so once you get moment of inertia you can substitute in this uh, formula and then you can get the stresses uh, in all the booms so for that what we are trying to do here it is first uh, i am writing here sigma z equals to mx and uh, what he has given mx is nothing but 200 Yeah, 200 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by ixx we got 2.52 into 10 to the power of 8 into y 
so this one you can see and uh, this gets cancelled and you left with 200 by 2.52 into y so you will get sigma z equals to some constant into y okay and therefore what you can do here it is you can make this tablet column and you can write all the booms and respective y distances and the sigma z you can substitute its respective y distance over here in place of that so that you can get the stresses for all the booms 1 2 for example for boom 1 its y distance from center is 381 and for boom 9 its y distance from center is minus 381 so like that for upper half of the section you will get the positive uh, boom areas uh, boom y distances and for lower half of the section you will get negative uh, y distances so you can substitute accordingly and you can get the stresses and you can write here all the stresses but here 200 by 252 you will get a constant into y so in place of y you can substitute all the distances for example let's try to write sigma z1 that is equals to 200 divided by 252 into the y distance for 1 is nothing but 381 you have to substitute so when you do that you are going to get 302.4 for sigma z9 if i have to do then 200 by 252 into minus 381 i have to substitute so when i substitute minus 381 i am going to get minus 302.4 newton per mm square okay this is the stress similarly if i try to substitute for 4 send 200 divided by 252 and for 4 the distance is nothing but 148 145.8 so when i substitute 145.8 i am going to get the stress as 157 115.7 newton per mm square one y okay so you'll get one one five point seven newton per mm square for four and for 14 you're going to get minus so like that you have to substitute for all the different uh, booms the respective y distances and you can get all the stresses in the boom 16 booms okay uh, out of which the 5 and 13 are unstressed so you get stress as zero okay so this is how we calculate the direct stress distribution for the booms uh, for the fuselage section which are subjected to bending okay so thank you everyone for watching and in the next session uh, we are going to see the fuselage section which are subjected to shear loads and the torsion loads thank you everyone for watching